Hello and welcome back to JVCTR. For those that are new, my name is Johnny and today we've got something a bit different. Welcome to a week of the Abarth 595 Competizione. You gotta listen up, listen up. There's not a thing that I can get from you. Boy, I don't need that much, need that much. How can I tell you what I wanna do? Now, firstly, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to Abarth UK who have lended me this car for an entire week so I can really get under its skin. Now, that's a good thing because this car is a car that's intrigued me since its UK launch back in 2008. And since then, it's changed a lot, but doesn't really look any different. Now, this car's most recent facelift was in 2016, where they added slightly more aggressive bumpers, front and rear, although unless you're a keen Bath enthusiast, they're quite hard to notice compared to the old ones. Um, and the other most obvious visual styling change would be the body colored centers on the rear lights. And other than that, there isn't too much difference from the exterior styling of the facelift. But the biggest change and most noticeable change, I guess, um, is, is that exhaust. So when the guys at the bath sat down and they decided, hmm, let's facelift this thing. What does it need in terms of engine and performance and that kind of stuff? Well, it doesn't need any more power. 180 horsepower in something the size of a shoe is more than enough. So they decided, let's just make it louder. What you heard there was a Monza valved exhaust. And by God, I think it makes this little 1.4 engine sound amazing. I mean, it's, it's certainly noisy, that's for sure. But the one thing I would say is that it's a valved exhaust, which means you have the option of it being quiet. But unfortunately, they seem to have forgotten about the quiet bit. So when you change the valves, it doesn't really make much of a difference. So, first impressions of an Abarth 595. Well, behind the wheel, um, it's actually a really fun place to be. Now, a lot of the components of the driving don't seem to be quite right, but somehow, when they all sit together, it makes up for a really hilariously fun package. Like, I don't really understand how they've done that. So, for example, um, the gear stick seems really high, which is quite nice because it's really close to the steering wheel, which means quick shifting is straight in. Um, but the handbrake is down here, like you have to bend down to pick it up. And I, I don't really understand why they've done that. It's a bit of an ergonomically weird place to put it. The steering itself is a lot heavier in sport than it is in normal, but unfortunately that doesn't really seem to translate to any more feeling. It's just a bit heavier. Um, but those few niggles aside, for some reason, this car is hilarious fun to drive. I mean, it shouldn't be given those niggles, but it is. I mean, the gearbox, it's not like a mechanical bolt, ac like bolt action action, um, but it's slick, it's satisfying. It's, I mean, it'd be nice to do it with two fingers. It's like a delicate gearbox, but yet you can still have hilarious fun with it. This car is just full of oxymorons. Okay, so let's talk about the interior. Now, one of the first things you'll notice about the Abarth interior is the Sabelt seats. Now, these look great. Um, if I'm going to be very critical, they are quite firm, but they're more than comfy enough to sit in and they make it feel quite special in here. In terms of other things in the interior, you've also got Alcantara on the dash, a little bit on the steering wheel, and then also these carbon fiber inserts too, which, which make it look that, that a little bit nicer than your standard Fiat 500. Now, as we are talking about the interior, I guess now's a good time to talk about practicality too. 
So the boot space in here is 185 litres, which isn't that much to be honest, but when you open it and actually see the boot, the way that it's shaped is a really usable space. So in actual fact, it might only be 185 litres, but it's a very usable 185 litres. The other thing I like about the boot, which is only a little thing, is you get a little tab to pull it down on as opposed to a handle. Kind of race car-y, I like that. So let's talk sport mode. Now this car, I, if I'm honest, I only really use it in sport mode, but I had a bit of a play in normal, as I am now, and I just wanted to report back to you guys um, what the differences are, really. So in normal mode, um, steering's quite light, a little bit agile, um, it's quite nice city driving, I guess. Um, Throttle response is a bit meh, it's, it's all right. Um, but as soon as you stick it into sport mode, uh, the steering then becomes a little more weighty, but as I mentioned before, it doesn't really seem to get a whole lot more, you don't really get much more feel out of it, it's just a bit heavier. Throttle response is much better, um, it's pretty much as I would like it all the time, which is why I spend my life in sport mode now. But most interestingly, in normal mode, you don't seem to get quite as much boost as in sport mode, which means I guess you're actually flipping ECU maps, perhaps. It's quite interesting, so if you're in normal mode, let's just say, let's put it in normal now. If I'm in fifth and I put my foot to the floor, we watch the boost gauge rise and it gets to about 1.4 at most. 1.4 boost. Now, if we go back into sport mode and we do the same thing, wait for the boost to jump, and we get about 1.8 boost. So, there you go. That's a little bit of a fun fact for you. Switching between normal and sport mode, you are actually running a different map. Interesting. Now, as I mentioned before, this car has 180 horsepower and it's the size of a shoe, which means it must be really, really fast. But until now, and we're a little bit later in the day now, so until now, I've kind of felt that it doesn't feel fast but I think I've got to the bottom as to why that is and it's not because it's not fast it is it is pretty rapid but there's a reason behind it not feeling fast now the first one is simply because it's a five gear box not a six gear box which means the gears are then obviously longer and then you don't get that sensation of absolutely ripping through the gears and it that kind of stuff so that's the first reason for it feeling a little bit slower than I thought it would but the main reason for it feeling slow this morning was because of the traction control system. Now, I don't know, it just seems overly intrusive and it, it made the whole car feel slow. And like it's the slightest glimpse of wheel spin and it would rob you of all the power. All the power, gone. And then you try and accelerate again and if you got an inty, inty, inty bit of wheel spin, you'd rob all the power again. And now, as soon as I've turned that off, this car is one hell of a lot more fun. <laughs> so there you have it. That is the end of day one with my Bath 595. And I've thoroughly enjoyed it, if I'm honest. And I've brought you here to the end of this video because you've got a car full of Italian heritage and a pub full of British heritage. How cool is that? So if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more about my Bath journey, Feel free to hit that subscribe button and I will catch you in the next video.